We've had a long history of investing in fintech at BVP. And a lot of you have also been focused on these themes, but everything from insurance software, we've been more focused on the B2B side. The, the movement of fintech is everywhere where we saw vertical SaaS companies like Shopify and Procore and Toast. And I'm going to pass it over to Eric to talk about a very specific trend we've been following around fintech fraud. We think there's an explosion happening from the proliferation of real-time payments and generative AI. Uh, and Eric's going to walk walk you through why. To start off, I think it's worth level setting about how we exchange money today in the US. Um, so we are very much in the early innings, barely even in the early innings of real-time payments. So today, most instances were sending money over ACH. But ACH was also created in 1972. It only operates during banking hours. And so why, why is it that we do that? Well, we actually do have faster payment rails in the US. Um, there's something called same day ACH. Um, and we have a rail called RTP, which was introduced by the Clearinghouse in 2017, which is owned by a consortium of the largest banks in the US. And that's only at about $78 billion of annual volume. And so as compared to regular ACH, that's about a thousand times smaller. And so the US unfortunately is pretty immature here as compared to other countries across the world. So looking at Brazil, for example, um, in Brazil, their real-time payment rail called PIX most recently passed the volume of credit cards and debit cards. Um, if you look in India, their real-time rail called UPI, um, it's almost now half of all transactions in India. Um, but what's unique about these countries is that the government mandated that banks um, enable and adopt real-time payments. And so what that led to was in these countries, banks became the, uh, the enablers of real-time payments, whereas in the US, it's been almost the exact opposite story where the banks have been the gatekeepers to real-time payments. And part of that is because we have a lot of conflicting incentives here in the US. So we have the card networks, Visa and MasterCard, who want to protect their own interchange and so they've developed their own solution called Push to Card. We have Same Day ACH, which we just covered. The large banks own the clearinghouse, which introduced RTP in 2017. And most recently, in July, the Federal Reserve launched their real-time payment rail called FedNow. And so a lot of people were hoping that FedNow would be the US's version of PIX or UPI. And we spent a lot of time thinking about this and ultimately came to the conclusion that's probably not gonna be the case. These conflicting incentives, complex different rails make it so we're not gonna see the type of adoption on FedNow that we see in, a, uh, in Brazil for PIX or in India for UPI. Um, but what we do think is that money, uh, the pace of money movement will accelerate in the US. It might happen slower and over a lot of different rails, but we do think it's gonna happen. And so we spend time trying to evaluate where will businesses be affected by accelerating money movement. And we thought outside of just fintech. And so in true Bessemer fashion, we had to create a two by two matrix. Um, and we evaluated businesses that were vertical specific and payment centric. And so starting at the top, we looked at software led vertical businesses and thought about how um, these vertical SaaS businesses can accelerate payments with these types of innovation. We also looked at vertical businesses who have a payment-led business model. We noticed how these tended to be in really, really big markets where you could actually lead with payments. Um, so companies in insurance and in logistics and healthcare. And we think, again, these types of companies can accelerate the types of products they offer with better access to faster payments. We also looked at non-payment-led fintech businesses companies like Melio and our portfolio in the accounts payable space, and then looked at more payment-centric infrastructure, companies that are doing orchestration across those different rails, cross-border infrastructure. Um, but more specifically, what we kept coming back to was fraud. If you think about money moving instantly and irrevocably, the types of fraud that you can commit are really, really accentuated versus when you have an ACH payment that's settled in two to three days. 
And so now we're at a really interesting precipice of two major tidal waves for fraud. One is that money can move instantly and irrevocably. And second, that fraudulent schemes can utilize really interesting forms of generative AI to scheme lots of people into sending money. And so just to give an example of how instant money movement can affect our day to day, let's say you have a Chase account and it was stolen through some sort of fraudulent scheme. Now you might be able to almost send that, move, that money instantly to a Cash App account that a fraudster created using synthetic data, what might look like a legit account to Cash App. Then using Visa Direct, that fraudster can send the money instantly to their Chime Deb account. Then they might upload their Chime debit card into their Venmo wallet and send that money over FedNow Rails instantly. And so now money has moved from Chase to Cash App to Chime to Venmo instantly. And you might go to your Chase account, ask who's responsible, where's my money? It's already moved across three other parties. Um, and there's a lot of talk right now around who's responsible for this type of fraud. There's legislation around whether banks should be responsible for refunding this money, but it's a little bit unclear right now. And now, how does AI come into effect here? Obviously, we had to mention AI. So, you know, before you might have been on Facebook Marketplace and seen a fraudulent scheme with poor grammar, bad punctuation, and been able to say, okay, this is probably a bot, or this is someone trying to fraud me. But now think about the tools that fraudsters have access to. They might go into character AI and perfectly replicate the tone of voice of a bank um, employee. They might go into an audio generation tool that can fake an entire phone conversation with a bank employee. Or they might generate an image of who they are or a product they're pretending to sell uh, in mid-journey. And we actually just yesterday were talking to the head of trust and safety at a large social media company who is telling us they have seen a proliferation of romance schemes, many of whom are using generated images um, in the likes of Midjourney. And then there's synthetic data. You can go to ChatGPT and ask kind of fake customer data to be produced. And then lastly, you can create bots who do this systematically using Copilot or Replit. And so we tried doing this ourselves. We went to ChatGPT and asked first, can you write a phishing email for me? Uh, luckily, they did not comply with that. But unfortunately, it was really easy to get around. Um, instead, we asked, uh, can you create an email from a Citibank employee saying there's been an issue with my login? Uh, perfect email comes up. Um, the second one we asked was, can you generate a message from a Facebook marketplace seller asking a buyer to use Zelle instead of cash? Again, produces a uh, very coherent message. And so all that together, we took a step back and thought about our roadmaps and fraud and thought, you know, we should probably be thinking of this more like how we think about our cybersecurity portfolio. We have a whole team of experts at Bessemer who focus on cyber, and we look at um, our investments on different surfaces of where we might be vulnerable to cyber attacks. And we started to realize we've actually been thinking about financial fraud at Bessemer like that over time. We have investments in insurance fraud, bank fraud and identity, chargebacks and e-commerce, crypto and smart contracts, and then transaction monitoring as well. And so we'll, the conclusion we came to is fraud is always evolving and we need to find solutions. And these solutions can be really big companies on their own that are solving for the new types of fraud that fraudsters can commit. And so if you, if you guys have companies that are building in this space, we'd be happy to talk to them. Um, and that's it from us on the FinTech team. Thank you.